Hi everybody, Captain Al speaking with your training tips designed to help make you a better, more knowledgeable flight simmer, pilot, or aviation enthusiast. Let's lower the HUD and see what is on the horizon for today. Our briefing today will cover a line flight from uh, Seattle Tacoma, KSEA, to Anchorage, Alaska, Papa Alpha November Charlie. This is part one in the Boeing 747-8. So this will be a line flight for uh, flight simmers. It'll kind of put together individual video information that I've done into uh, uh, one flight from uh, point A to point B, just a typical line flight. It'll give a feel for who does what when in terms of the uh, captain and the FO or the pilot flying and the pilot monitoring. It will give a feel for uh, flight planning uh, we won't go in-depth on flight planning. In other words, uh, usually the flight planning papers consist of uh, the flight plan and the weather and performance and uh, no TAMs. And uh, so we'll primarily be using the uh, flight plan and we're not going to go over the no TAMs or the uh, weather and things like that. We'll be using a Boeing procedures and flows. And again, it is a flight from uh, Seattle to Anchorage using Boeing procedures. And uh, for my setup, in case you're interested, it's the uh, I use the Active Sky for current weather for a P3D version four, and then I also have the P3D version four professional edition. And in addition, I use the PMDG Boeing 747-8 uh, simulation model. And for the flight plan, I use SimBrief. For charts and data, I use Navigraph. And for VATSIM, I use the uh, vPilot uh, client. Uh, this will not be a VATSIM flight, but that's what I use when I do some of the limited stuff I do on VATSIM. And the PC that I have is uh, probably not advanced as a lot of people have. It's a, a PC that's an i7 with uh, 4 gigahertz. The, uh, I have 32 gigabytes of RAM, Windows 10 Home, and the video card is the uh, weakest chain in the link. It's a GTX 750 Ti for the graphics card. And that's uh, not a very adequate card for uh, gaming. And uh, But my setup is more of a trading computer than it is a uh, gaming computer, so... Uh, the computer is about five years old, so the next computer I get will be one that's uh, more gaming in nature so that I have a better video card. And uh, I don't use a control column or rudder pedals or a thrust quad or anything like that. I use a, a Satec uh, X52 joystick. I have the buttons programmed for different things. And then I use the Satec uh, X52 thrust quadrant. And so for the rudder... Uh, operation. It's used with a stick uh, twisting and uh, it works adequately. In case any of you are interested, this is my uh, home office and you can see it's uh, this computer is set up again more for uh, trading than it is for gaming and so they not a lot of emphasis on the video card and that's why it's a 750 Ti. I do have a six uh, monitor setup Two of the monitors are 22 inch and four of them are 24 inch and then I have an Apple Mac iMac that's uh, 27 inch and uh, usually I just put use one screen for the uh, uh, simulation and then I'll have active sky up here and I might bring the flight plan over here and uh, sometimes I'll have the charts up there and then I can put the V client over here or anything I want. So it works out pretty well. Let's go to the virtual simulator and take a look at the line flight from uh, Seattle to Anchorage. And we'll be starting out with a airplane that's powered up. And uh, we arrive at the flight deck and the, uh, adjust our lighting and then we're ready to go. We're in the uh, virtual simulator. And we're going to be doing a line flight from uh, Seattle Tacoma KSEA to Anchorage. Alaska, Papa Alpha November Charlie, we're in a Qatari uh, freighter. 
It's the uh, 747-8 and they have not started loading the airplane yet. We'll go inside and the airplane is powered up. It's got uh, external power one uh, on the synchronous bus and external two is available and that will allow the main deck handling bus to remain powered so they can load the airplane. And we've already adjusted our lighting and we're at the point where we're going to start our preliminary pre-flight procedure and then from there we'll go to the FMS CDU uh, pre-flight and then from there the uh, first officer will do his cockpit flight deck preparation and then the captain will do his flight deck uh, cockpit preparation and uh, of course the flight simmer does everything but uh, for further amplification you can view any of my videos on uh, the flight deck preparation videos or flow patterns or checklist usage all those go into more depth in terms of uh, setting up the flight deck so that will go up to the overhead panel and uh, turn on the IRUs as part of the preliminary pre-flight and we'll bring them into the nav position and then we'll go down to the status page and check our uh, status messages and make sure that they're clear and we'll bring this up a little bit so we can see it we'll select status and uh, check for status messages we've got a couple here window heat but I know those will go away when I turn on the window heat um, there are no other status messages if there were we'd have to address them and uh, call maintenance and uh, they would try to clear them or look into the problem and then if we couldn't get rid of it then we'd have to check the MEL whether we could be dispatched with that item in this case I know these are going to go out so we'll check our quantities hydraulic quantities are sufficient for the flight we'll check our oxygen and uh, passenger crew and passenger oxygen quantities they're good we'll check the airport map database and we'll also look at the UTC time and just make sure it's correct. We're at uh, 1920 Zulu on 1st of May and elapsed time is zero, so that's all good. And then we can go back to uh, engine on that display. And then from there we'll go check whatever emergency equipment we can check. And uh, things like the escape reels that they're stowed, the proper numbers in there, they're stowed. The P7 circuit breaker panel, all the circuit breakers are in and whatever is collared is collared. P6 circuit breaker panel will make sure that circuit breakers are all in there and collared if necessary. We'll check the escape hatch is uh, locked and the cushions in place. And if we move down uh, a little bit, right in the uh, this little roll top desk that you can see right here at the bottom. Uh, this goes from bottom to top. It lifts up like a little old roll top desk. Inside there you'll find the uh, Halon fire extinguisher, the PBE, and the uh, crash axe. We check those and any other miscellaneous equipment like life vests and flashlights and uh, things like that we check on the flight deck. Uh, we can also check the overhead maintenance panel all the guards should be closed there should be no lights uh, the only light we might see is this one and right now we don't because external ones on the airplane only so the SSB is not open so that's extinguished we check that the APU TR APU switches in uh, APU battery the towing power switch should be off if cargo heat would be as desired and again no lights here the squibs and the voice recorder are uh, maintenance function so we don't check those and we'll make sure we're on the menu page. The menu page is usually where it's going to be uh, when power is first applied to the airplane. And we can see in this case it looks like power was applied to the airplane because it's on the menu page. And also the MCP is 200 and uh, north and 10,000, which tells me that the airplane was unpowered and then it was powered up. So in this case, we start on the menu page, go to FMC. That'll take us to the IDENT page. Um, I don't have the 10 minute uh, time here. I just have uh, that it, as soon as I put in a position, the IR, IRUs will align so I don't have to sit there and wait for 10 minutes. 
Uh, so it says on our IRS positions telling us to do that. We'll check the model 747-8 freighter, GENX engines. The Navigraph database is uh, good. It's current. Uh, it's May 1st. We're in that range. Of course, we don't have two databases here like we normally would, just the one, since we're in a virtual simulator. Ops program, don't worry about drag factor, fuel flow factor, we don't care. Um, some airlines do set things in here depending on the age of the airplane. We'll go to the pause and it page next. We're in Seattle, so we'll put in the Seattle airport to do a reasonableness check. So we'll put KSEA into the reference airport. You can check that against the uh, GPS position, against the last position, and uh, they're all comparable. And uh, so we know we're in the Seattle area. And we can use the GPS position because that's the most accurate for the IRS position. So we'll select that, the scratch pad, put it in the boxes, and then we can check our UTC time. And then we'll go to our route. And the route, you've got a couple choices. One choice is to uh, manually enter everything. And the other choice would be to uh, use the data link system. Um, a lot of times I do it manual because it's just faster to do it. I think I'll do it in data link system today just to in case you're not familiar with that um, for the data link system to work you have to do some initialization first so if we uh, kind of stop with the CDU there and go down to the um, center CDU this will have the uh, data link uh, hookup and we can go to the ACARS main menu and then go to preflight and then what we can do is put in our information here. So our origins, the main thing it needs is our origin uh, airport, which is uh, KSEA. And it needs our destination airport, which is Anchorage, Papa, Alpha, November, Charlie. And we need our estimated uh, time of departure. We're going to say it's... Uh, We'll just estimate here. It's going to be 2000 uh, UTC. Estimated time on route is two hours, and let's see the flight plan. I'll show you that in a minute. The flight plan shows 256 to Anchorage. And uh, the two letter IKO or IATA identifier for Qatar doesn't need this, I don't think, for initialization, but we'll put it in. I think it's QA. Could be maybe it's something different. So that's about all we need on this data link page. So we can kind of stow that for the time being. We can go back up. Uh, it's probably going to need a little more information in here. Um, we could put our flight number. Let's see if that. Um, results in, and this is the three character identifier for the airline which is uh, QTR I believe for Qatar 44 is our flight number and um, let's see if we get the data link uh, yeah that did it you needed that flight number on the route page and what I was looking for is this data link connect down here we got to see that so I just needed to go back to the root page and put in uh, Qatar 44 for the flight number because that transfers to here. And now we've got the connect. We didn't have that before. So now what we can do is push that and that'll sync up. And then once it's synced up with the uh, ACARS, uh, we'll get a message that the data link is uh, active. And once it's active, then it's kind of like our, we have a company connection then to get our uh, flight plan and to get our route and our winds and uh, information like that uh, across the data link system. So it takes a little bit of setup to get this uh, going. And we should see that change. There it is, it just changed to a data link active. So now we have a data link connection, which is good. But we're not done yet because you have to come up here and see, you can see why this is kind of a little bit of a pain. Uh, and it's almost faster to enter the route manually. Um, we can use the send request, but right now there's nothing to send to. So if we bring our flight plan over, this is our flight plan in PDF format, but this is SimBrief, by the way. And uh, 
if I go back to the original page where I put in my information and then created the flight plan, and then of course I did a uh, PDF version so I'd have a paper copy if I wanted it. I don't, I don't print it out, I just leave it on the computer on my screen, one of my screens. And uh, here you've got the uh, print view PDF, but you've got this information as far as the dispatch output, the summary of the flight plan, a visual picture of the flight plan from Seattle to Anchorage with our alternate there. And then we've got, here's the actual flight plan. And then you come down here to the files. This is really what we want for the data link. So we're going to use the, um, there's three files that I want. This one, right, uh, I think this one will work. The uh, P3D, uh, Seattle Anchorage, and it's the .pln. That's one that I want. Uh, this file I want for the, um, this one right here that I just downloaded, I want for uh, the Active Sky uh, for P3D version 4 is what I have. And I want this for the, um, so that I can, uh, display the flight plan on my map with the actual weather. So this is actually for the uh, Active uh, Sky application and then of course I want the PMDG uh, flight plan and winds uplink the uh, .rte and .wx the other one was .pln and uh, so these I'm going to select as well I'll download that and I'll download the uh, weather. And then of course what uh, you'll see them down here, there's three of these tabs, I just downloaded them. And then I open them up and say show in the folder. And we've got the, uh, let's see, the plan's not in there. Why is that not in there? Let's go back to the plan again. That'll be this one right here, FSX. I think this says no. This one's no SIDS or stars, so we'll try that one. And uh, that should be in there now. Yeah, it is. So we get these files. Basically, get these files and go show and finder. And then what we can do is get rid of the flight plan. And so we've got these files now uh, where they're located. And then what I need to do is drag these into the appropriate folder so that this understands when I hit send, it's going to understand these three files, or the two files actually. The other one's for Active Sky. So what I can do is go to the Windows and go to File Explorer. Not that one. And go to Windows and uh, File Explorer. Open that. And I can go to the uh, C drive. Uh, and I can go to P3D version 4 and go to PMDG and then go to flight plans and then go to 747 and then I can drag these files out of here um, I'm not going to want the plan but I want the weather and I want the um, route well, I do want the plan actually to go in here as well because it'll be accessed by the other application so now they're in there, so it's like this is like the company information now, so that the uh, company is basically prepared the dispatcher. So now what I can do is come back here, and now everything should be set. I have a data link connection, I have the files, and now I should just be able to hit request send now. And then it should give me the, uh, let's unfreeze the simulator. And 7471, Seattle Anchorage. Shouldn't have to go through all these steps to get to this, but we have to for the file. So here it says request now, and there's our route. And we'll go ahead and request that. Uh, and now you can see it's sending. So normally you just push this and it would say sending, and then when it gets to the dispatch office it says sent. And then of course the company will get it, and then they're going to send back the, they're going to uplink the uh, route. So now we see that uh, route one uplink is ready. They've sent it back to us and uh, we can load it or purge it. We're going to load the flight plan now. Push load. It says route one uplink loading. And now it's going to put in our uh, route. 
and you'll notice when the scratch pad message goes away it's loaded and so we have Seattle to Anchorage it's Qatar 4-4 it put that all in there for us it put re-put this in here and then if we go to the next page it'll have our flight plan uh, the only thing it's not going to have is the uh, SIDS or STARS if it is part of the flight plan so if we look at the flight plan let's move this over and we'll bring the uh, flight plan back and we'll go back to here and here's our flight plan that we got from uh, Simbrief it's Qatar 4-4, Seattle Anchorage, 1st of May, or d estimated time of departure is 2000. Flight 44, 1st of May, there's our tail number. It's a domestic routing, Seattle Anchorage is the number one release. And uh, there's our dispatcher, desk 58, phone number. Uh, there's our time, our local time, and our Zulu time. Destination alternate is Kanai. It's uh, Papa Alpha Echo November in uh, Alaska. And uh, here's our minimum fuel for takeoff is 85,738. That's our min fuel. Block fuel is going to be 87,738. And we have uh, actually more than that on board. We have about 90, I think 94,000 I put on board. Because uh, fuel is free and what the heck uh, in the virtual world. So here we've got our you know signatures. The dispatch release is the first page of this. This, by the way, is the Delta Airlines format. You can pick whatever flight plan format you want. There's several to choose from. I had another one chosen, but I kind of picked this one. This one uh, seems to be a little more familiar with. So you can see here it's got the uh, information again, the same information, and. Um, and then we come down here and now here's the here's mainly what we want the main body of what we want right now and that would be it's an IFR flight plan there's our ship number and equipment elevation of Seattle and Anchorage and here's our flight plan that's really what I want uh, 340 okay usually a lot of times this is 360 340 256 en route 1287 nautical miles we can check that against the progress page True airspeed 470. Here's a breakdown of our uh, weights. And then if we go to the next page, we can see here's a breakdown of our fuel uh, en route and to the alternate and our reserve fuel. And there's our min fuel again uh, for takeoff and block fuel and starred and uh, so forth. So what we're going to check for right now is the route though, because we want to put that in. So we'll see here, It's here's our origin, Seattle, here's our destination, Anchorage. Bangor 9 to Ari, direct uh, Ann, J195 flips, direct sit, J133 humpy, direct to Juliet Oscar Hotel, Yeska 6 arrival onto Anchorage. So you can see that we've got the main body here. We've got Ari, direct Ann, J195 flips, direct sit, J133 hump, humpy, and on the next page will be the direct to JOH. But we don't have the uh, SID, and we do have a SID as part of our flight plan. And we don't have the STAR, and the STAR is part of our flight plan. So we can load those in. So if we go to the uh, back to the CDU, and freeze the simulator, uh, we can go ahead and then add that. So we'll go departure, arrival key, we get Seattle departures, and we're going to choose a 1-6 left for departure, and the uh, SID is the Bangor 9, it's the RE transition, and then we can go to Root, and we'll see we have Bangor 9, RE transition to RE, direct AND, J195 flips, direct SIT, J133 humpy, that's all good, direct Juliet Oscar Hotel, and now we need to put the arrival in. So Anchorage arrivals, Route 1, uh, we'll put the uh, Yeska, Yeska 6, and there is a JOH transition, so we want that. And uh, we don't know what approach they're using, so we don't care about that. Go back to root, we can activate and execute the root. And if we look at our flight plan once more, uh, so anytime you put in a root, it's a good idea to look at the waypoint after 
the SID and before the star because they could be transitions. They might not be, but uh, in this case they both are. So Banger 9 does have an RE transition. Yeska 6 does have a JOH transition. So I always, always look at the waypoint after and the waypoint before the star to see if they're possibly transitions. And if they are, then I can I can recognize them when they come up that it's a transition for that star or a transition for that SID. Okay, getting back to the flight plan. Uh, so you'll notice we're done with the root page. Um, if you wanted to, we could come over here and uh, let's go to our ND. Move things around so we can see them. And we could step through the route and we go to the plan mode. And we could bring our range however we want it. Could increase the range, decrease the range. And we'll go to the legs page. And then you'll notice on the legs page we have a center prompt in the middle. We have a step prompt at six right. And now we can adjust our range as we want it. But we can step through the route. And what that'll do is just give us a visual depiction of our route of flight oriented to true north. So as we step through, you'll notice that uh, KVOB is in the center of the ND now. And step again, we go to the next waypoint, which is RENB, is in the center of the ND. And then step again, a richer is in the center of the ND. And then we go again, and Tomre is in the center of the ND. And then if we step again, we'll go to page two automatically, Banger. And we can step through the whole route like this. And all this does is shows us a visual depiction of the route oriented to north. So if I bring up my range, you can see that, uh, you know, here's Anchorage up here and there's our route. And we're going to be heading kind of uh, northwest bound. You can see that. Uh, but what it doesn't do is, it, this is not an acceptable method of checking our route of flight, that it's adequate, just stepping through there and saying, okay, that's good, that looks good. Uh, one thing we have to do is check the uh, total distance against the flight plan. And we could do that since we activated an execute. We'll go to progress page 1279. Remember the flight plan showed uh, 1287, you can see here. Uh, 1287 and the CDU shows uh, 1279. That's reasonable. That's good. Uh, that's one method that we can use, but we still have to, what we have to do, and we'll uh, take that up right now, is to check our courses and distances against the uh, flight plan. So after we're done uh, stepping through the route, Uh, we always want to go back to the map mode when you're done. And then you notice the center prompt goes away, the step goes away. And uh, we're done with that. But one thing the FO will do, or you know whoever the pilot monitoring is, he's going to take the master flight plan and check the courses and distances against the uh, legs page to make sure that the flight plan, which is the master flight plan, agrees with the um, what we have on the legs page, what we put in. So if we take this flight plan, uh, actually let's not take this one. Let's take this one, which is, um, I took a snapshot of it. So if you look at our uh, route, we have on page one, we have a 164 heading until passing 932 feet. That's basically so that there's no turns below four to 500 feet. So, you know, Seattle, um, Seattle elevation is like, I think it's 400 feet or so. So usually this uh, conditional waypoint is about 400 above the field. I think I see that with the PMDG here, the database, it's around uh, 500 feet, but it's usually about 400 feet. Just ensures that there's uh, 
no turns after takeoff. And once this condition is met, because it's part of the procedure, that it'll fly a 164 heading till passing this altitude. And that ensures there's no turns when you arm LNAV and LNAV engages at 50 feet. It won't make any turns until this altitude. But then after that, it's going to pick up the 160 course to KVOB, and then the 165 magnetic course to Renby, and the 244 to Richer. And then, of course, the mileages between these points are right here and the uh, altitudes. So what we can do is we can compare the courses and distances against what we have in the flight plan. If we look at the uh, our flight plan, right in this area, uh, from Seattle we're going to uh, KVOB, and it's uh, three nautical miles. And the magnetic uh, course here is 162. And so we would compare this, 162, with the course that we have uh, going into KVOB here, which is 160. And it's a couple degrees difference, but and you're going to see one or two or three degrees difference. That's okay, because this is great circle over here, and this is not great circle here. This is a magnetic course. So, but as long as they're reasonable within a couple degrees, it's fine. You'll notice that it says three miles, but here it says one mile. Well, we also have this conditional waypoint that's going to take up some distance. So uh, that's probably going to be around two to three miles by the time you get to KVOB. So what we can do is once we verify that um, that is uh, proper for KVOB, we can come here with our pencil and we can uh, circle this. And uh, airlines have different procedures for this, but uh, we'll say this is our procedure to circle it. And that means it's been checked. And so uh, one of the flight plans will be designated up here as the master because uh, we might have a couple flight plans but uh, we designate one as the master and put it on the clipboard and then of course you'll have the uh, verification here that uh, we check that course and that distance the next one is uh, Renby and you'll notice it's a 165 course at 5 nautical miles so we'll check that the magnetic course is 166 at 5 miles so that checks it's within one degree that's fine and then we go ahead and uh, circle that the next one's richer and it's a 244 at 5 miles so we'll go to richer and it's 245 at 5 miles so that one's good now these probably probably aren't going to be able to make checks here because these are all going to be passed in the climb, you can see one, five, six, eleven miles. You know, there's no, we're not going to be taking time estimates here, but we still need to verify all these. On Tome Ray 281 at four, Tome Ray 283 at four, that's fine. And then we'll go to the next page, and then we'll go get our sketch note again. And then we got Bangor at uh, 302 at 25. 304 at 25, that's good. And then RE, we've got uh, 285 at 27 and uh, 287 at uh, 27. So that's good, 27 miles to RE, so that checks. And we'll circle that. And then if we go to the next one, it's going to be AN, and you'll notice there's a top of climb here, and that, that's going to be taken into account as well. So you can see the top of climb is um, 22 miles, and then to AN, it's going to be uh, 504 miles. Uh, yeah, all of a sudden we go from little mileage to big mileage. So we'd have to add that 504 to 22, and that'd be 526. So 526, and then we'll look at the uh, magnetic course inbounds, 312 to Ann. So we've got the 310 at 526, and here is 312 at 526. So that's good. Checks. It's within a couple degrees. And then if we go to Udean, it's uh, 289 at 59, 292 at 59. 292 and we're uh, 289 so yeah, three degrees but it's again it's great circle so it can it could be a couple degrees off that's fine and then to flips uh, 288 at 85 
uh, we're 291 at 85 checking that and that so that's good and then we go to sit which is the next page and this is how you go through your flight plan uh, to make sure it's all courses and distances all match so sit would be a 290 at 27 and 286 at 27 again that's fine the so sit looks good we'll circle that and uh, that's as far as we need to go but you get the idea we'd circle all these and go all the way through our routing and they're all checked okay so our routes in there and we've checked the uh, legs page against the flight plan we'll go to perfinet next and we'll um, you'll notice here it says perfinet data is loaded as well from our company so it says accept or reject we're going to accept it and that'll load everything for us now we do have to check this because uh, some of this will not be correct and then we get wind data uplink ready well we're not ready for it yet so we'll wait for that the uh, 675.9 is good we got 93.8 on the fuel that gives us a gross weight of 769.7 uh, the reserves we'd have to probably check it because the flight plan may show something uh, different and if we go to the flight plan and we go to the reserves we can see that the uh, here's our breakdown here and we've got uh, 33 minutes to the alternate there's our fuel 30 minutes reserve and then contingency so 45 minute domestic uh, alternate plus 45 minutes so we'd have to add these and that's going to be about uh, let's see that's 19 24 about 25,000 if you add these up uh, 10 15 24 and 25,000 for the reserves so you can see we'll have to kind of modify this a little bit we'll call that 25 and you can see from the flight plan that our uh, let's see we're climb 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 uh, cruise altitude is uh, 34,000 so it usually puts that in there correctly now I had a flight plan in here earlier and maybe this kind of screwed something up but uh, right now it's uh, the flight plan shows 340 and it shows uh, 34 uh, right here 3402 so we're going to change that uh, normally that puts that in there correctly but this time it didn't for some reason 340 cost index uh, this is the standard you know that you put in for PMDG of 100 but the uh, flight plan uh, showed um, did that show yeah th so here's the cost index the cost index is 25 so we'll change that as well to 25 and the cruise CG you do not want to have it be big font you want it to be predicted so for some reason it makes a big font here and we really don't want that so we'll delete that just to make it a prediction because I don't want that thrust limit depends on if you have a flight plan program that figures out your uh, performance for the runway I know the runway length and uh, we don't weigh that much so I know TO1 is going to be sufficient I don't have a program that tells me what the analysis is but I know we'll have no problem getting airborne with that takeoff we'll go to page two first and uh, put in our outside air temperature which is uh, up to 15 in Seattle and the wind will be uh, we'll call it um, I'll look at my active sky for that so this is what the uh, active sky looks like um, and we can remember we got that PLN uh, flight plan so we can go to our flight plan here and we've got Seattle to Anchorage I put this in 34,000 and now what we can do is load that uh, plan in there and there it is from the uh, folder and we can select that and open that and then what that'll do is put in all our waypoints uh, for the route based on our flight plan and then when you go back to map 
you'll have everything in there for the that'll be overlaid on the actual weather. So I just wanted to show you that. I'll get that out of the way. And now if you look at the Seattle weather, the ATIS, uh, the winds are, well, it looks like they're calm. 10 statue miles, broken at 19,000. Temperature 17, dew point 3, altimeter 3005. 3005, and the winds are calm, so uh, nothing on the winds. So we'll put in uh, calm winds. And uh, no, you know, no tailwind, headwind. No crosswind. And um, then we've got our default here, uh, which is what I set it to, which is a thousand acceleration height, engine out acceleration height, 3000 uh, acceleration height. This is NADP1 and 1500. Sorry, I don't know that. Uh, yes, yeah, I'm not talking to you, Alexa. I didn't say Alexa. Uh, so 1,000 feet, 3,000 feet, and uh, 1,500. So that's the default. And now we go back to page 1, put on our flap setting. We're going to use flap 10. CG was 22 on the, uh, we put in the uh, performance information for the PNDG. So we'll activate our V speeds and... The preflight then would be complete. Actually, the simulator's frozen. That's why we're not getting the uh, V speed. So if I unfreeze it, and uh, now we'll get the trim. We should get the trim here. Should calculate it 6.3, and then that completes the CDU preflight. Uh, so probably a good place to stop. You can see this takes time to do this everything. So uh, notice. A, the fact you have thrust limit in the dash line indicates the CDU preflight is complete. If you didn't complete it for some reason, it would say the it would have the uh, preflight. It would say preflight up here on the dashes, and then underneath it, it would have the page that's not complete. So if you didn't fill out some boxes somewhere, then it would go ahead and uh, tell you that it's not complete. But I know from dash line across here and thrust limit that everything is complete. Okay, next video we'll continue with the uh, flight deck prep with the uh, checking the panels. So that'll be part two. Thanks for watching.